We now present The Adventures of Marco Polo. Marco Polo and his companions arrived at Pekin, the capital city of China. They entered the great gates of the city, and they were immediately arrested on the orders of Van Chu, the governor. They were placed in the dungeon, while the Princess Zelana was taken to the palace of the great Kublai Khan. The Khan looked upon her features, but she twisted her face and grimaced in an endeavor to make herself ugly, so that the Kublai Khan could not make up his mind whether to marry her or not. Princess Zelana then pleaded for the lives of Marco Polo and his companions, but Van Chu, the governor, tried to persuade Kublai Khan to kill them. Eventually, the Khan agreed to interview the four Venetians. Meanwhile, Marco Polo, with his father Niccolo, his uncle Matteo, and servant Benno, were crouching in an underground dungeon. It seems to me that our journey to China has ended in disaster. All we will see will be the four walls of this dungeon. A most uncomfortable dungeon, I must say. The ceiling's too low. Much too low. I cannot stand up straight. I think the Chinese are barbarians. On the contrary, my brother. They're a highly civilized race. Mm, they're not treating us like civilized people. Oh, I have a pain in my back. I wonder if we could ask them to place us in a larger and more spacious dungeon. Uh, Benno, how are you feeling? Oh, this is a most uncomfortable dungeon, and I do not like the Chinese. I do not like that man, Van Chu, who placed us in this dungeon. He eyed me as if he wanted to kill me. Yes, he eyed us all in that manner. He is a villainous-looking scoundrel. Well, it behoves us to be polite to him. After all, he is the nephew of the Kublai Khan. Well, what do we care for Kublai Khan or his nephew? We are not likely to see either of them again. I blame you for this, Marco. Now, why blame... I knew that you had been making love to the Princess Zilana, and this is our punishment. Well, I have an idea that the Princess Solana may be able to save us. I think it is all because of your lovemaking, Master Marco. I have always found that women cause trouble. If we had come here without the Princess Solana, we might have been saved. Well, we're not dead yet, Benno. Let us trust that the great Khan may consent to speak with us. Someone comes now. You will step out of this dungeon. Are our lives to be spared? Ask no questions. Come with me. Are we to be taken to the presence of the great Kublai Khan? You are to be taken before the great Kublai Khan. You will prostrate yourself before him, and you will speak until he addresses you. You see, Uncle Matthew, the Khan has consented to see us. Come, let us follow the governor. You will walk... Come, let us follow the governor. You will walk between the files of soldiers. Do not attempt to escape, or you will instantly be put to death. Oh, I wish he would not look at me like that. I know he wants to kill me. Silence, Benno. Oh. Now, come, Benno. Be of good heart. We are oh. still alive. Oh. And of all the wonders of China, we are to see the great Kublai Khan. Though that is something. Oh, what use is it to see the great Kublai Khan if we are soon to die? Silence. Oh. You will come now with my men. March! <laughs> Marco Polo and his companions were led from the dungeons into the palace of the great Khan. They passed through the gardens, observing the beautiful parks, tame deer and the hawks which wandered the grounds. They passed the Khan's keepers leading great leopards which were held by golden chains, and they marveled at the wonders which they beheld. At last they were led into the palace itself, through colonnades of marble pillars inlaid with golden dragons, through mighty halls paved with brightly colored precious stones, until at last they reached the audience chamber. There sat the great Kublai Khan on his magnificent throne. On either side of him were tall soldiers clad in suits of golden mail. The four Venetians moved forward to the foot of the marble steps, which led to the throne. Most noble, high, and excellent Khan, ruler of all the world, emperor of the blessed people, before you stand four Venetian prisoners, white men who have dared to penetrate the most magnificent of cities. 
You have asked that they be brought before you, most excellent, most high and noble Khan. And I order them to prostrate themselves before the ruler of the world. Come, Marco. We must obey these orders. Bow down before the great Khan. Uh, it is well. Let the western men rise that I may look upon them. Who is your leader? Great noble, most excellent Khan. I am the leader of these men. We come offering you friendship. We bring you gifts from the great Pope of Rome. We come from Venice, and our nation is a nation of traders. We have many wonders, many riches, and many marvels, similar to the ones you have here in your land of China. I am told that it is a land without land, uh, this Venice. <laughs> of our most noble Khan, my bearers bring you gifts, and we bear messages of friendship. Do you not know that I have decreed that any white men who set foot in this city should die? We knew of that decree, and yet we risked our lives that we might be ambassadors of friendship between your people and ours. Yeah, you speak like a brave man. Uh, what uh, think you of my city? I have not yet seen your city, Great Khan. Oh. I have heard much of its wonders, and I trust you may spare my life so I may see them. Well spoken, well spoken. Uh, you do not speak words of praise and flattery. Uh, you uh, spoke the truth. Uh, who is the tall young man who stands beside you? He is called Marco Polo. He is my son. Hmm. Your son. Speak, Marco Polo. Uh, what think you of my city? All I have seen of my city. All I have seen of your city, great and noble lord, are four walls of a dungeon, the ceiling of which was too low. There was nothing about the dungeon which I'd like. When I have seen more of your city, mayhap I will give you my opinion. <laughs> Bravely spoken. <laughs> now what says the other man with a beard like a goat? Come, my uncle Matthew, speak when the Khan addresses you. What, uh, my beard is not like that of a goat. Peace now, peace. Speak when the Khan addresses you. Uh, most noble Khan, I am grateful that you have spared our lives. Yes, well, I may yet alter my mind. What think you of my city? Well, I am told it is a noble city, and I would fain see more of it. Yes, I see. And the other man, what has he to say? Uh, he is our servant. What is this? A common servant brought into my presence? And to what means this? Most noble lord, you asked to see all four prisoners. You did not tell me one was a servant. He may not speak with me. Uh, what is the hour? It wants but one hour to noon, O oh, noble Khan. How did you tell the hour? I see no sundial here. Have you uh, no water clocks in the nation of Venice? I have never heard of a water clock. Well, uh, that is a water clock standing uh, near the Lord Van Chu. Uh, why, we have had them for many years. Ruth, that is a marvel. Can you tell the hour by that device, most noble one? We do. It seems that your nation of Venice is not so civilized, my friend. Now, it is my decree that you shall live until we have shown you some of the wonders of our city. You will be quartered here in my palace. The Lord Van Chu will be responsible for your welfare. When you have seen all the wonders we have to show, mayhap I will kill you, but uh, seek not to escape. I pledge my word that we will not seek to escape. Why should you wish to take our lives, most noble Khan? Does the great Kubla Khan slay his friends? Is he a tyrant? Peace, dog. For words of insolence, you shall die. Stay your hand, Van Chu. It is my will that these men of the Western world should behold the wonders of my city. They may learn much. And I will have you know, Marco Polo, that I am no tyrant. Christians, Jews, Muslims, and other worshippers all have the freedom of my city. All pray as they wish to pray. And I am much beloved by the people. And yet you would take the lives of four men who come to you with offers of friendship... The white race has not always been disposed towards the people of China. Go now, Van Chu, we'll lead you to your quarters. Tomorrow you shall that you may buy any goods which may chance to please you. Now let my treasurer come forward and give these people money. But, Most High, this is not money. These are but pieces of parchment. And the softest parchment I have ever seen. Have you not seen paper? It is a form of parchment which we have used here for many years. And that paper passes for money. You will find that you can purchase goods with it. Now take it and divide it amongst your friends. We will speak again in three days' time, and then I will decide your fate. May I ask one question, most noble Khan? Uh, you may. The Princess Zalana, she is soon to be wedded to you. With this money which you have given us, may I buy her a wedding gift? 
Well, I, I am not sure whether I will wed the princess. She has an affliction of the face which does not please me. Still, uh, uh, that is no affair of yours. Uh, now follow. Uh, that is no affair of yours. Uh, now follow where my officers lead you. The audience is at an end. Marco Polo and his companions were led to their quarters. They were each given large separate rooms, and Marco Polo found himself in a luxurious room, the walls of which were decorated with silken tapestry. The tables and chairs were inlaid with gold and silver. Marco Polo was unable to find out where his companions had been taken. He sat thoughtfully in the vast room when one of the curtains was suddenly pulled aside. Who comes? Marco Polo? Have you forgotten me so soon? Lana, Why, what do you hear? Well, I am free to roam the palace at will. I have a woman's cunning. I found there were two ways of entering this room. One entrance is guarded, but the other is not. Oh, you should not have come here, Zelana. Why, if they find you, if they find you... Well... I may be killed and you may be killed. No. Hear me, Marco Polo. I have news of great import for you. News? I have found a plan by which you may win the friendship and the gratitude of the great Khan. <laughs> 